first of all thanks for being here in my youtube channel so in this lesson number one on the topic calendar we are going to learn introduction completely about the topic calendar so there are two topics in aptitude section one is calendar and the second is clock so these two topics are most important if you are going for ssc staff selection commission exams similarly if you are going for rrb railway recruitment board or it sector interviews or state government exams definitely you will see one question from calendar and also one question from clock it's very interesting and very easy to if you know the traditional method properly basics are important so if you are strong in basics without knowing don't learn any shortcuts right if you learn only shortcuts a 40 percentage of the question can be solved in calendar easily if you are solving 40 second by using a shortcut you can solve the same question in 20 seconds but remember that if you use if you study only shortcut there there might be lots of exceptional cases where you can use only traditional method to solve so remember that now we are going to teach only the traditional method not the shortcut method in future videos i will definitely teach you the shortcut but before learning shortcut try to know what is the traditional method so now in the introduction first we will be seeing what is called as ordinary year and what is called as leap year if if by seeing a year right you need to decide and you need to say whether it is an ordinary year or a leap year the easiest way is now we are at 2019 right so 2019 whether it is an ordinary year or a leap year if you want to find this just check the last two digit alone whether it is divisible by four or not if last two digit is divisible by four if it is getting divided by four then it is called as a leap year if it is not divisible by four then it is called as an ordinary year next year we have 2020 right so listen carefully here the last two digit is 20 now it is 2019 and the last two digit is 19 whether 19 is divisible by 4 no it is not divisible by 4 so we can say 2019 is an ordinary year next year is 2020 take the last two digit last two digit is 20 check whether it is divisible by 4 or not 20 divided by 4 yeah it is divisible so 2020 is called as a leap year where 2019 is called as an ordinary year so the year which divides by 4, if it gets divided by 4, then it is called as a leap year. If it is not getting divided by 4, then it is called as an ordinary year. So the difference between ordinary year and the leap year is, ordinary year, we have only 365 days. But in a leap year, we have 366 days. So this is the difference between an ordinary year and a leap year. If you want to know the difference, now we are in 2019, that to February month, right? In Feb month, we have only 28 days. In this year, 2019, check the calendar, we have only 28 days. If it is a leap year, in the February month, we have 29 days. That's what we, leap year contains 366 days and the ordinary year contains 365 days. So the only change, it will be happen on the February month. Just check the calendar. In this year, we have only 28 days in February month. But next year, we will have 29 days. So it is called as a leap year and it is called as an ordinary year. And another important thing, this 365 days as 52 week plus one day, which is called as a 35 days, 52 week. So 52 into seven, we know that one week we have seven days. So 52 into seven will be 364. And another one day which is taken as 52 weeks plus one day is an ordinary year. And similarly for a leap year, 52 weeks plus two day. Additional two day is an leap year and this is an ordinary year. So remember that a day which is more than a week, right, which is called as an odd day. Listen carefully, 52 week and one day. So in calendar, what we usually say is 52 week and one odd day. Got it? One or day. Similarly, in a leap year, we have 52 weeks plus two days. But in a calendar, how we will say 52 weeks plus two odd days. So odd days is nothing but a day which is uh, extra days from a week. Take, take like that. If odd day meaning is extra days from a week is called as an odd day. And uh, let me take some of the examples, right? Whether 2016, 2012, then... 1947, 1945, uh, 1923, so 1916. So let me take whether, uh, let me find whether it's an ordinary year or a leap year, right? 2016 is an ordinary year or a leap year. 
So what do you need to do? You need to check the last two digits that is 16. Whether 16 is divisible by 4 or not, yeah, it is divisible by 4. So it is called as a leap year. So because of leap year, in 2016, we will have 366 days. You need to say this as 52 week plus 2 odd day. So every leap year will have 2 odd days. And every ordinary year, we have only 1 odd day. So if it is 2016, what you need to say? It is a leap year. Second, this 2016 will have 52 weeks plus 2 odd days. Got it? Next is 2012. Whether 2012 is a leap year or not, check the last two, two digits whether it is divisible by 4. Yeah, it is divisible by 4. So we can say it's a leap year. So 2012 is a leap year. If it is a leap year, then it contains 366 days and this year will have 52 weeks and additional 2 odd days. So it's a leap year. 1947 whether it is a leap year or not no it is not a leap year because 47 will not divide by 4 we can't able to divide 47 by 4 we will get at a decimal point something so it is not a leap year it is an ordinary year if it is an ordinary year then 1947 will have 52 weeks plus one odd day got it and in 1947 february month we have only 28 days and these two years in the month of February, it will have 29 days. Next number is 1945. Whether 1945 is a leap year or not? No, it is not a leap year because the last two digit is 45. We can't able to divide this 45 by 4. So it is not a leap year. It is an ordinary year. So if it is an ordinary year, then this year will have one odd day. Got it? Next is 1923. Whether 1923 is an ordinary year or a leap year? No, it's an ordinary year because 23, we can't able to divide 23 by 4. So it is an ordinary year. Next is 16. Yeah, 16 is a leap year or ordinary year? It is a leap year because we can divide this by 4. So every year, if it gets divided by 4, then it is called as a leap year. If it is not getting divisible by 4, then it is called as an ordinary year. And second important thing, if it is an ordinary year, we have 365 days. If it is a leap year, we have 366 days. If it is 365 days, the same thing can be also said as 52 week plus one odd day. In a calendar, we will not say one extra day. We will say this as one odd day. So 52 week plus one odd day will be an ordinary year. 52 week plus two odd day will be said as leap year. Got it? So next is... Uh, let me take any examples. Uh, there is an exceptional case in the leap year, right? Century years. For example, if it is 2000, right? If, if, if think that there is an year 2000, right? Whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year, because we usually divide the last two digit by four. But remember that if there is any century years, like last two digit ends with zero. For example, 1900, 1600, 400, 300. 1800, 1100. So these are the years you can see the last two digit is zero, which is called as century years. If it is a century year, divide this by 400. If it gets divided by 400, then it is a leap year. If it is not divided by 400, then it is not a leap year. Right? So let me take some examples see here. If it is 1800, right? So year 1800, whether it is leap year or not, First, see the last two digit. Last two digit is a zero and zero. So it is called as a century year. If it is a century year, what you guys have to do? You should not divide by four. You should divide by 400. Check whether it is dividing by 400 or not. No, it can't be divided by 400 because we can cancel zero and zero. So 18 is not divisible by four. So 1800 is an ordinary year, not a leap year. Let me take another example. 1600. Whether 1600 is an ordinary year or a leap year, check the last two digit. Last two digit is 0 and 0. So it's a century year. If it is a century year, you should not divide this by 4. You should divide by 400. So 1600 divided by 400, we can cancel 0, 0. 16 can be divisible by 4. So finally, 1600 is a leap year, not an ordinary year. It's a leap year. Got it? Whether 2000, it's an ordinary year or a leap year. 2000 is a century year, right? First divide this by 4. If you divide this by 4, where 20 can be divisible by 4. So it is a leap year. Let me take another example. Take any other number which is 1200. Whether 1200 is an ordinary year or a leap year, it is a leap year because 1200, the last two digit is 0, 0. So it's a century year. If it is a century year, we need to check whether it is divisible by 400 or not. Yeah, it is divisible by 400. So we can say it's a leap year. So similarly, if we have 300, 
right the year 300 whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year so same thing the last two digit is zero so divide this by 400 whether it is divisible by 400 no it is not a leap year 300 is not a leap year 200 is not a leap year 100 is not a leap year but 400 is a leap year 800 is a leap year 1200 is a leap year which means all the multiples of 4 is called as a leap year if it is not a multiple of 4 it's called as an ordinary year that's it right so for example 4 every leap year 8 will be leap year 12 will be leap year so 16 will be leap year 20 will be leap year because these are the numbers are multiples of 4 in case if the last two digit is 0 and 0 then what you guys have to do you need to divide the number by 400 and check whether it is uh, divisible or not if it is divisible then it is called as a leap year and if it is not divisible then it is called as an ordinary year so let me move on to some of the examples how to find uh, so that you will be better strong on the concepts right so let me move on to some of the examples now so now let me see some of the example here and we can check whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year just to understand the concept clearly right so first is 1943 so 1943 whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year so 1943 the last two digit is 43 so 43 will not be divided by 4 so we can say it is an ordinary year so because of ordinary year 1943 we will have only 365 days and in 1943 5th month we have only 28 days and 1943 can also be uh, said as 52 weeks and one odd day got it 1820 so 1820 is an ordinary year or a leap year the last two digit is 20 so 20 will be divisible by 4 so we can say it is an leap year so 1820 will be leap year so this year will have 366 days 52 week plus 2 odd day so 1732 so the last two digit is 32 whether it is divisible by 4 or not 8 fours are 32 yeah it is getting divided by 4 so we can say it is a leap year next is 1800 so listen carefully the last two digit is 0 and 0 so first we should call it as a century year because last two digit ends with 0 so 1800 is a century year if it is century year you should not divide by 4 you should divide by 400 whether it is getting divided by 400 no it's not so we can say 1800 is an ordinary year 1930 the last two digit will be 30 whether 30 is divisible by 4 no it's not so we can say it is an ordinary year next 2001 2001 the last two digit is 0 and 1 no it listen here only if the last two digit is 0 and 0 then it is called as a century year right so last two digit here it ends with 0 and 1 so definitely it is not a leap year it is an ordinary year because when you check whether it is divisible by 4 no it is not so we can say 2001 is an ordinary year 2020 so last two digit is 20 so it is getting divided by 4 so we can say it is a leap year 2009 so the last two digit is 0 and 9 whether it is getting divided by 4 no it is not so it is called as an ordinary year 1916 so last two digit is 16 definitely it will divide by 4 so we can say it is a leap year 1903 so last two digit is 0 and 3 check whether it is divisible by 4 or not no it is not divisible by 4 so it is an ordinary year next is 300 so last two digit is 0 and 0 so it is called as a century year if it is a century year check whether it is divisible by 400 or not so divide by 400 no it is not divisible so we can say it's an ordinary year 1400 last two digit is 0 and 0 so it is a century year if it is a century year check whether it is divisible by 400 no it is not getting divisible by 400 so we can say it is an ordinary year it is not a leap year 16 16 last two digit is 16 so definitely it will be divisible by 4 so we can say 16 16 will be leap year 16 54 the last two digit will be 54 whether it is divisible or by 4 or not no it is not divisible so check whether it is divisible by 4 no it is not divisible so we can say it's an ordinary year 1864 1864 last two digit is 64 so check whether it is divisible by 4 or not yeah it is getting divided by 4 so we can say it is a leap year that's it so this is the way initially you need to learn how to check the year whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year and second important thing you have to learn is in an ordinary year we have 365 days and the same 365 days can be also written as 52 week plus one odd day if it is a leap year we have 366 days and same 366 days can be also written as 52 week plus two odd day 
and remember that the difference between a leap year and an ordinary year so ordinary year in fifth month we have 28 days but in a leap year the same fifth month will have 29 days got it so that's it about uh, finding the year whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year so now let me move on to one of the important concept that is in a calendar topic is odd day so just now i have told you what is called as an odd day an extra day from a complete week is called as an odd day so let me see some example you can able to understand what is called as an odd day so listen here uh, let me take 10 days right in 10 days if the question is asking how many odd days we have so this 10 days we need to split in terms of weeks so this 10 day can be written as one week plus three day got it because one week we know that we have seven days so seven plus three will be ten days so this ten days can be written as one week and three odd day so this is the thing we are saying it's an odd days so ten days contains one week and three odd day so an extra day from a complete week an extra day from a week is called as an odd day let me take another example right let me take eight days if it is eight days how many weeks and how many odd days are there so eight days can be written as one week plus one odd day so got it because one week will be seven day and another one day so total will be eight day so this eight day can be written as one week and one odd day so in in eight days totally we have one odd day if it is 16 how many odd days you have in 16 days so this 16 days can be written as two week because two week will be 14 days plus additional two odd day so two week will be 14 days and additional two day when you add both the numbers result then will be 16 so 16 days as two odd days got it so let me take another example let me take uh, 21 21 days how many odd days we have for 21 days listen here 21 can be written as three week right because three week will be 21 plus zero odd day friends got it in three weeks we will getting 21 days so three week plus zero odd day mentioned as 21 days so for 21 days we don't have any odd day so similarly if it is uh, 50 let me take 50 odd days so 50 days let me take 50 days in 50 days how many odd days we have just divide the number by 7 because we are going to write this 50 days in terms of week plus additional odd day so 50 when you divide 50 by 7 so we can say it has 7 weeks plus 1 odd day so 7 week plus 1 odd day because 7 into 7 will be 49 so 49 plus additional 1 will be 50 so in 50 days we have only 1 odd day and remember this chart right if it is one odd day then we can say it's a monday if it is two odd day then it is a tuesday if it is a zero odd day then it is a sunday you need to buy out this it's really easy right starts from zero ends with six and zero will be sunday and remaining one two tuesday wednesday thursday that's it just buy out this chart alone so if you get three days three odd days then what will be the answer it's a wednesday if we are getting two odd day then what will be the answer tuesday if we are getting zero odd day then the answer will be sunday and if you are getting only one odd day then the answer will be monday so remember that you should learn how to split the days into weeks and also an odd day right so let me take another example right uh, 56 so how many odd days we have for 56 first divide this by seven so when you divide this by 7, we are going to convert this 56 in terms of week and also days. So 7, 7s are 49, 7, 8s are 56. So we can say it has 8 weeks. If it has 8 weeks, then we don't have any odd day. So 56 can be written as 8 week plus 0 odd day. That's it. So let me move on to some of the examples so that you can uh, know what is called as an odd day perfectly. So now let me move on to some of the examples to find how to know the odd days for the given days. So listen here, 23 days, the first is 23 days. In 23 days, we have to write this in terms of week and an additional day. So 23 can be written as 3 week because 3 week will be 21 day plus additional 2 day. So this can be written as 3 week plus 2 odd day. So 23 days contains 2 odd day. If it is a two, do, two odd day, then the answer will be Tuesday. That's it. So 12 days. So 12 day can be written as one week. That is seven plus additional five days. So this can be taken as 12 days contains five odd day. If it is five odd day, then the answer will be Friday. Next is 42 days. 42 days 
will be 6 weeks, right? So 6 week will be 42. So we don't have any additional day other than this week. So we can say 6 week plus 0 odd day. So 42 days as a 0 odd day. So this can be written as 0 odd day. So the answer will be Sunday. Next is 30 days. So 30 days we have 4, 7 was a 28. So 4 weeks. So 4 week will be 28 plus additional 2 odd day. So 30 days we have 2 odd day. So if it is 2 odd day then the answer will be Tuesday. Next is 71 days. In 71 days how many weeks we have just divide by 7. So we can say 10 week. So 10 week will be 70 days because 1 week 7 days 10 week will be 70 and we will have 1 additional odd day. So we can say for 71 days we have additional 1 odd day. So this is the way we will find the odd days for the total given days. So what you guys have to do is if it is 50 or if it is 110 days or 120 days whatever be first divide by 7 if try to convert the value in terms of week and additional days so the extra days from a week is called as an odd day so try to buy out this chart is very simple so based upon the odd day we will say the answer that's it about odd days so now we can find how many odd days we have for 10 years 20 years in the previous cases in the previous concept if it is 49 days, we found how many odd days are there. If it is 23 days, all the numbers were given in days. So by using that, we convert the days into week and we found how many odd days are there. But here, for, for example, for first 100 century, for, for example, for first 100 years, how many odd days we have. For first 20 years, how many odd days we have. And now we are going to find that. Very important and very interesting. Keenly watch the complete video. You too can able to find how many odd days are there easily. Got it? So don't feel difficult. It will be very, very easy. So let me do one thing. For first 10 years, let me take this, right? So for first 10 years or 20 years, let me take for first 20 years, how many odd days we have? Listen carefully. For first 20 years, you guys have to know how many leap years are there and how many ordinary years are there. So what is called as a leap year? Every multiples of 4 is called as a leap year. So from the first year till 20 years, how many leap year we have? Just calculate in the mind. 4 is a leap year. 8 is an another leap year. 12 will be an another leap year. 16 and 20. So out of first 20 years, we have 5 leap years. So 5 leap year and the remaining 15 will be an ordinary year. Friends, any doubt here? Listen carefully. Out of this 20 years, we are going to find out of 20 years how many odd days are there, right? And first thing what we did in this 20 years, we have decided how many leap years are there and how many ordinary years. We know that leap year will be multiples of 4. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So totally in 20 years, we have 5 leap year. So remaining 15 will be an ordinary year. Next step. In the basics, I have told you, every leap year will have two ordinary days. So, 5 into 2 plus and every ordinary year, we have one odd day. So, 15 into 1. Friends, got it? So, leap year, we will have 366 days, which is taken as 52 week plus 2 odd day. That's what I am saying. For 5 leap year, we have 5 into 2 odd day. Similarly, for an ordinary year, 15 into 15 years into 1 odd day. So, let me multiply this. 5 into 2 will be 10. 15 into 1 will be 15. So, totally we have 25 odd days. And now, we converted the years into days. Now, it is easy to find the odd day. What we guys have to do? Divide by 7. So, 7 3s are 21. So, 3 week plus 4 odd day. So, finally, we can say that for first 20 years, we have 4 odd day, which means what is called as 4 odd day? 0 will be Sunday, 1 will be Monday, 2 will be Tuesday, then 3 will be Wednesday. What about 4? 4 will be Thursday. So, we can say 31st December of 0020th year will be Thursday. So this will be the answer friends got it so listen here finally we got 25 odd days for the first 20 years and uh, we got 25 can be written as three weeks because 21 days plus another four odd day and then the initially i've told you a chart that if it is four odd day then it should be taken as thursday so finally we can say 31st december of the last year 20 will be the thursday so got it let me move on to some of the examples 
Now let me move on to another example for 0, 0, 0, 1 to 0, 0, 40. So for first 40 days, that is 40 years, right? 0 to 40 years, uh, let me find how many odd days are there and we can decide which day it is. Listen carefully. For first 40 days, what is your first target? We need to check how many leap years are there, how many non-leap years are there. You don't want to calculate like this 1, 4, 8, 12 like that. If it is a smaller number, we can do that. But if you practice more, you can directly divide by 4. We know that 1 to 40, totally we have 40 years. 40 years divided by 4, totally we have 10 leap years. So 10 leap year, then 30 ordinary year. Friends, any doubt about it? So I am saying 10 leap years because 40, we can divide 40 by 4. If you divide 40 by 4, we can say 10 leap years. If you, if you are a beginner, do like this, right? 4. 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, multiples of 4, right? 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 and 40. So totally in first 40 years, we have 10 leap year and 30 ordinary year. Kindly don't calculate like this. Try to calculate by seeing the last digit that is 40, divide by 4. So we will have 10 leap year and the remaining 30 ordinary years. If it is a leap year, how many odd days we have? 2. If it is an ordinary year, how many odd days we have 1? So 10 into 2 will be 20, 30 into 1 will be 30. So 30 plus 2 will be 50 days. So totally for the first 40 years, we have 50 odd days. So split this 50 odd days in terms of week. So we can say 7 week will be 49 days plus 1 odd day. So finally 1 odd day. 0 will be Sunday, 1 will be Monday. So we can say 31st December of 0, 0, 40 will be Monday because we got one day, one odd day, right? One odd day which determines Monday and the 40th, the last year 40, 31st December of 40th year will be Monday. That's it. This is the way you need to convert the year in terms of odd day and finally you need to convert the odd day in terms of week and odd day and you can able to find the answer. So let me move on to first 100th century how to find the answer. Uh, 0 to 100, right? So for the first century, yes we can find how many odd days are there. Interesting. So first, what you guys have to do? We need to divide this by 4. Got it? Listen carefully. Here we have 100. 100 is a century year. If it is a century year, you need to divide by 400. So 0 to 99, let me find how many leap years we have. Plus 100 is a century year. We should divide this by 400. So 0 to 99, how many leap years we have? 0 to 40, we have 10 leap years. 40 to 80, we have another 10 leap years, that is 20 leap years, 88, then 84, 88, 92, 96. So totally, we have 24 leap years in this 0 to 99. And 100 is a century year. We need to check whether it is leap year or not. Divide by 400, no. It is not getting divided by 400. So 100 is an ordinary year. So totally, out of the 0 to 100, we have 24 leap year and the remaining 76 ordinary year. Friends understood this concept most important. So first what I did is in this first 100 years we have to check how many leap years we have, how many ordinary years we have. In order to check how many leap years we have, we know that leap years will be multiples of 4. So out of 0 to 99, we checked how many leap years we have. So totally 0 to 99, we have 24 leap years. And the last 100th year is a century year. In the beginning, I have told you, if it is a century year, you should not divide by 4. You should divide by 400. So 100 is not getting divided by 400. So we can say 100 is an ordinary year. So totally in the first 100 years, we have 24 leap year and the 76 ordinary years. Next. We know that leap year has two odd days, so 24 into 2 and in ordinary year we have only one odd day, so 76 into 1. So this will be 48 and this will be 76, let me add this. So this will be 4 and remaining will be 1, 7 and 4 will be 11, 11 plus 1 will be 12, that is 124 odd day. So totally we have 124 odd day. What is your next step? You need to split this value in terms of week. So let me divide this by 7. If you divide this by 7, 1 7s are 7. So remaining will be 5, 54. 7 7s are 49. So remaining will be 5. So 17 week plus 5 or day. So that's it. So 17 week plus 5 or day will be total of 124 days. So we can say 5 or day. What will be the answer? 0 will be Sunday. 1 will be Monday. 2 will be Tuesday. 3 will be Wednesday. 4 will be Thursday, then 5 will be 
Friday. So answer for this will be Friday. So which means the 31st December of the century year, that is 100th year will be Friday. So that's it. So this is the way you need to find the odd days. Friends got it? So finally we can say the century year that is 100th year, the last date will be Friday that is 31st December 100th year will be Friday. So only thing is you will find all these steps but you should know how to write this alone. It is important right? So 0 to 100, I have split this as 0 to 99, then 100th year. Why? Because we know that all these multiples of 4 will be a leap year. But the last, this 100th year alone, we need to check whether it is divisible by 400 because it's a century year. And it is not divisible by 4, so we have taken this as an ordinary year. So out of this 100 years, we have 24 leap year and 76 remaining will be 76. So 76 ordinary years. And every ordinary year, we have one odd day. And every leap year, we have two odd day. So totally for the first 100 years, we have total of 124 odd days. So split the 124 odd day in terms of week. So 17 week plus 5 odd day. So 5 odd day according to the chart, we know that it's a Friday. So finally 31st December of the century year, first century 100th year will be Friday. So finally we found for the first 100 years, we have 5 odd days. So for next 200 years, right? for first 200 years, let me take for first 200 years, it is easy because first 100 years we know 5 odd day. For first 200 years, so 5 odd day into 2, resultant will be 10 odd days. So if it is 10 odd day, we can write this as 1 week plus 3 days. So again 3 days, 0 will be Sunday, 1 will be Monday, 2 will be Tuesday, 3 will be Wednesday. So we can say it will be Wednesday. That's it. It's very easy because once you know this first 100 years, how many odd days we have, finding all remaining values will be easy. Just see, for first 300 years, how many odd days we have? We know that first year, that is first 100 year, we got 5 odd days. For first 300 years, we can say 5 into 3, that is 15 odd days. Directly multiply this, right? 5 into 3 will be 15 odd days. So 15 can be written as 2 week plus 1 odd day. So 0 will be Sunday and 1 will be Monday. So we can say answer will be Monday. But remember that most important for first 400 years, how many odd days we have. Similarly, we can multiply 5 into 4, but we are adding 1 year. Why we are adding 1 year? Because 100 is a century year. It is not getting divisible by 400. Similarly, 200 is a century year. When you divide this by 400, no, it is not divisible. So we have taken 100 as an ordinary year, 200 as an ordinary year. 300 as an ordinary year but 400 the year 400 the last year 400 whether it is getting divisible by 400 or not yeah it is getting divisible so 400 should be taken as a leap year so only we are adding 1 again so 5 into 4 will be 20 so 20 plus 1 will be 21 odd days so 21 can be written as 3 week plus 0 odd day so finally we can say that the last day that is 31st December 400 will be Sunday because we are getting zero odd day for 400 years. So we can say the first 400 years, the last 31st December 400 will be on Sunday. So that's it. It is more than enough to know all these values or otherwise at least buy at this alone. First 100 years, 5 odd day, 200 year, 3 odd days. 300 year, 1 odd day and 400 year will be 0 odd day. Try to buy at this, that is enough. In case, if they ask for first 600 years, how many odd days you have, it is very easy because 600 can be written as 400 plus 200. Keep this 400 as a base value, right? So 400 plus 200 will be 600. So 400 we have 0 odd days. <coughs> for 200 we have 3 odd days. So totally 3 odd days we will have for 600 years. If it is 700, what do you guys have to do? For 700 years, so split this 700 as 400 plus 300. So 400, we know that we have 0 odd day. For 300, we have 1 odd day. So totally we can say for 700, we have 1 odd day. That's it. It's easy. Once you buy out all these 4 values, odd days value, then completely the solving an odd day for an year will be easy. If it is 1200, how many odd days we have for 1200 years? How many odd days we have? 1200 is a multiple of 400. So 400 into 3 will be 1200. So we can say 4 in 400, we have 0 odd day. So similarly in 1200, again we will have 0 odd days. 
So every century, yes, that is multiple of 4 will have a 0 odd day. That's it. 400, 1000, 200, 1600, 2000. So these are the numbers we will have a 0 odd day. So by keeping this 400 as a base, we can easily find the answer. So in next video, we will be solving some of the questions on the topic calendar. So at that time, you can able to understand. So why we are writing all these steps. So finally, let we have a small uh, revision that we seen in the introduction concept because it's important, right? Why we are dividing by 4, why we are dividing a number by 400. So everything is important. So first, why we divide an year by 4 in order to find whether it is a leap year or an ordinary year. Right? If the last two digit is divisible by 4, then it is called as a leap year. So leap year will have 366 days. If last two digit is not divisible by 4, then it is called as an ordinary year. So ordinary year will have 365 days. And second, why we are dividing some numbers by 400? Because if it is a century year, the last two digit of a year is 0 and 0. 1800, 1600, 2100, 1500, 1400. So these are the years the last two digit ends with 0, 0. So it is called as a century year. If it is a century year, you should not divide by 4, you should divide the number by 400. If it gets divisible by 400, then it is a leap year. If it is not getting divided by 400, then it is an ordinary year. And the last why we are dividing by 7, in order to split the given days in terms of week and odd day. If it is 21 days, so 21 days can be written as 3 week plus 0 odd day. If it is 22 days, so 22 days can be written as 3 week plus 1 odd day. So that is what we are dividing by 7. And the last is an odd day chart. So starts with 0 and ends with 6. So 0 will be Sunday. That is it. By using an, this chart, odd day chart, we can able to find the answer. So 0 will be Sunday. Then 1 will be Monday and goes on till the Saturday. Right? So that is it about introduction on the topic calendar. So do not forget to watch the remaining video. Only if you practice more, you can able to crack the question on calendar. Without practicing, just by looking at the video, you can't. So try to solve more and more number of questions. Try to pick the numbers. Just take 1943 and check whether it is a leap year or not. And for this year, how many odd days we have. Similarly, for the Jan month, how many odd days we have. So try to calculate all those values. Once you practice more, definitely calendar topic will be very, very easy. So thank you so much for watching this video. So if you really like it, share it to your friends so that your friends can also learn this. So thank you so much. Bye.